Hey everyone, Matt here from Docs Running, and today we're going to do an overview of the Brooks 2023 stability line. Why are we doing this? Well, A, first of all, Brooks has one of the most extensive stability lines on the market right now, and certainly with the greatest variation from motion control shoes over here to actually the lightest stability shoe on the market. And that makes this really, really interesting. It also gives people a lot of choices. It can make it really, really hard to figure out which one's appropriate for me. So that's the goal of this is just comparisons, talk about specs and figure out which one might work best for you, or maybe which couple ones might work best for you. So I, a couple of quick notes before this, I am not including the Glycerin GTS in this because that is a 2022 shoe. Supposedly it's supposed to come out later this year in 2023 or early 2024. If we get it, I'll add it later. But right now we're talking about 2023 and I will mention it about where it fits in this lineup. Other quick note, know that Brooks, when I give you the midsole stack height, they don't include the insole. An insole's on average at about five millimeters to the stack height. So in your head, just add five millimeters more and you'll get the true stack height. I'm just giving you midsole stack heights that are given to us. So diving into this, Brooks has one of the most extensive ranges in the industry right now. One of the few companies that still has a quote unquote motion control shoe, although this is done very differently than it has been in the past. The Brooks Beast and the Women's vs. Brooks Aerial is coming in. It's a little heavier, so 11.9 ounces men's size 9, 10.7 ounces women's size 8, coming in at 26 millimeters in the forefoot, 14 in the, sorry, 26 millimeter in the heel, 14 in the forefoot, add 5 millimeters for that, for the true one, and extensive guide rails, DNA loft. It's the motion control high stability shoe of this entire range. So very different than when I was uh, tried running in this and was selling it 10 plus years over a decade ago when I was working in running stores, but there's still some elements that make this the most stable shoe in this lineup. So who's gonna do well? If you need a lot of stability, if you want a walking, jogging, running shoe, and you need a lot of stiffness in the heel and midfoot, this is gonna be your best friend. It's different though, because it's not as rigid and restricting as it was in the past. And there's actually some flexibility too, which is amazing. So it makes it a little bit more runnable. The, uh, again, 12 meter meter drop. So very standard for more of Brooks trainer range. The fit, first of all, is a little bit wider. So a lot of these Brooks shoes do fit normal to slightly, slightly slug, snug, except for the Hyperion GTS that we'll talk about. So if you want a little bit more room, that's a really, really big thing that might come into to go to this range. Because honestly, this feels like a bulky, a kind of more, more rug, not rugged, but a more bulky adrenaline. So trying to figure out adrenaline versus beast. If you want a lot more stability, a lot more rigidity, because the sole is much wider. Midfoot does not narrow too much. A lot of stiffness in the heel if you need that. This is going to work really well for you if you want the most stability possible. If you want a high heel drop shoe. If you want some decent cushioning. So the DNA Law V3 actually acts a little bit softer than prior versions. So things are a little bit a little bit softer, a little bit more cushion, not mushy at all, because Brooks does not do mushy cushioning, even in the Glycerin GTS. Um, so it's a well-balanced, very rigid heel and midfoot for those who need a lot of stability and want a kind of a more sturdy shoe underfoot with a little bit more room. So moving on to the Adrenaline, this is Brooks' standard stability shoe. This is one of the most popular stability shoes on the market to this day. It's had some big changes in the past, but right now it's staying really, really consistent. So spec-wise, coming in at 10.1 ounces for men's size 9, 9.1 ounces women's size 8. So on the lighter side for some of the stability shoes out there, and it definitely is a little bit more nimble, not like the launch DTS that I'll talk about in just a second, but definitely more nimble than some of the other ones out there. It's got guide rails. It's got uh, 24 in the, in the heel, 12 millimeters in the forefoot for a 12 millimeter drop that has stayed consistent throughout its lifespan. Um, it uses DNA Law V2, so it's a little bit softer than the previous version, but it's still actually a little bit firm, a little bit snappy. So if you want to do a teeny bit of up a tempo stuff, this works really well. But if you just want a, not a basic, but your standard stability shoe for those that need heel and midfoot stability, not so much forefoot, it's not that it's unstable, there's just no additional stuff here. This is going to work really, really well for you. Fit-wise, it fits normal to slightly snug, slightly short, as I've already noticed. And it's just a nice, dependable shoe. It can pick things up a little bit. It can do long runs really, really well. Another shoe that if you want a 12 millimeter drop, you want like that higher heel drop, this is going to do well for you. And especially those that need 
a little bit more stability, especially in the rear foot, and don't necessarily like a super rigid post, but want some stability on both sides. Now, again, just to compare these, the Beast and Ariel are is, is a way more sturdy shoe than the Adrenaline, not in a bad way. So if you like the Adrenaline, be like, ah, this isn't quite enough stability. The Beast, if you want to stick with Brooks, might be an option, especially for those that might have some serious orthopedic issues and maybe need a little bit more support and stability. The Beast might be a little better option versus those that just want something lighter, kind of more standard, it's consistent shoe. The adrenaline is going to probably work a lot better because it's almost two ounces lighter. So that that's quite a bit. Comparing this to the Glycerin GTS before we move on, the Glycerin is going to be a little bit higher stack height. I think it's like 32, 22 millimeters, a uh, little bit heavier than this one, but a little lighter than the Beast coming in at 10.6 ounces for men's size nine, 9.5 ounces for women's size eight. It's got that DNA Loft V3 without the same rigidity as the Beast. So it's a much lighter a little heavier than this. So if you want a softer ride than the Adrenaline, um, but like the same level of stability, the Glycerin GTS is going to come in very probably to meet your needs. And fit is just a little bit wider than the Adrenaline. Now let's move on to the stuff that I kind of like and I get it's like it's really sexy stuff. Uh, we're going to go with the Launch GTS first because it's next in line. This is a lightweight trainer, light stability, lightweight training shoe, which I love. And there's not very many of these left. So again, uses guide rails. Unlike the Adrenaline and the Beast, there is no medial post um, they don't usually talk about, but we've been told that's there. So this doesn't have that. It's just got the guide rails, a little bit more narrow, a little bit more snug performance upper coming in at 8.6 ounces for men's size nine, 7.8 ounces women's size eight with a 24, 14 uh, midsole stack height and an eight millimeter drop. So I'm sorry, 10 millimeter drop. Sorry, going from 12 to 10 over here. This shoe is, if you want lighter, if you want a little bit more snug, this is the shoe that can handle that and it's a little bit more performance oriented. So I've done daily training in this stuff. I've done a good number of workouts in this. While it's not the lightest shoe and I personally wouldn't use it for racing, it can still move quick. So a lot of people that run in the adrenaline or maybe the beast and go, I want a fast shoe. I'm not comfortable with something a little bit more minimal. I want something a little more sturdy and a little snug. The launch GTS is probably gonna do really, really well. It The cushioning is not, older per se, but it's kind of one of Brooks's older uh, cushioning. It's Biomogo DNA, which is firmer than all the other models that I'm going to talk about. And not firm in a bad way, but definitely snappy and a little bit more grounded than some of the other models, which I kind of like for my daily training stuff. It's been good. Durability has been really good. I've just liked it for its versatility. So a nice, versatile, lighter, mild stability shoe that is stable without being overbearing not as state it doesn't have as much ability as adrenaline certainly not as much as the beast but those who need a little bit this is going to do really well especially if you want to pick up the pace now my favorite one of the group the hyperion gts is the lightest stability shoe on the market right now so for those of us that need a little stability these not a lot of these these are dying right Saucony fast twist just appeared ds trainer disappeared so all the stuff that a lot of us wanted to run fast and disappeared it's not a super shoe at all. It doesn't have a super foam. It doesn't have a plate, but it can still move. And it's really nice. So this has got DNA flash, which is actually one of the softer midsoles of this group, despite being lower stack. It's coming in at 22 in the heel, 14 in the forefoot for an eight millimeter drop, the lowest of the group. 8.1 ounces, men's size nine, 7.3 ounces, women's size eight. So also the lightest. And like I said, the lightest stability shoe on the market. This can move. It's got decent flexibility. It's also got one of the wider fits in the forefoot of all these different models maybe model maybe like on par with the beast the midfoot and heel snug up just a little bit kind of your classic like almost racer-esque but widening up in the forefoot that's really really nice stability is mild for sure it's not your massive thing like the adrenaline the launch gts definitely have a little has a little bit more but this has just enough to keep you on track with some pretty good ground feel with just enough softness and bounce to get you through some solid workouts without being a, like a super shoe kind of shoe. So those who wanna run fast, so workouts, races, if you need mild stability, you're not doing well with super shoes, this is gonna be a really good option. It's really comfortable, it can move. Yes, you're gonna have to use a lot more of your body, but it's a great light shoe. And for those of us that want a light, light stability, lower to the ground, mild stability shoe, this is awesome. And I'm really excited that Brooks took to sleep and came out with this shoe. Yes, there's the neutral version of it as well, just the normal Hyperion, but this was the one I was most excited about because you can move fast in it. It's really, really fun. Um, it's definitely another racing option, probably compared to something like the Adrenaline and the Beast could be a racing option for those coming from maybe the Adrenaline from the Beast. I'd probably jump down to the Launch GTS, but if you just wanna run fast, you wanna get on the track, this is gonna be a really great option. My pair 
actually has almost 80 miles on it. Outsole is doing really, really well. And that's what I got to give. In terms of how I was going to summarize all this stuff, Brooks, you guys are doing, the durability has been really good on these. Um, that's really a consistent thing through the line. But which one is going to work for you is going to depend on what you want. If you want lightweight racing, Hyperion GTS. If you want lightweight mile stability training, Launch GTS. If you want your standard stability shoe with a kind of a more traditional 12 millimeter drop, guide rails, little medial post, adrenaline. If you want cushion version of this, Glycerin GTS. And if you want your maximum sturdy, tough, can handle anything, little wider fit, that's where the beast and the aerial is going to come in. And Brooks really has a wide variety here. So where they, and I'm just going to call them out on this, where they lack in terms of the super shoe category, they definitely make up in the rest of it for ma the majority of runners out there looking for safe, good shoes that can handle pretty much anything. And so those looking for stability, Brooks has some really, really solid options. It's a wide range, and hopefully this video helps you figure out which one you like, which one you might gravitate towards. But leave a comment below and say, hey, which one are you most interested in and which one is working best for you if you've tried it? Thanks again, as always, for watching. Hope this was helpful, and we'll always have new content coming really soon.